Hi, I'm Sean Hewitt. I'm going to read you three poems from my debut collection, which is called uh, Tongs of Fire and is out at the moment with Jonathan Cape. Um, I thought I'd read three poems from a translation that forms the second part of the book um, from the Middle Irish tale Willa Shivna. Um, so Swivna is the character and he gets cursed and has to go and live in the trees. Um, and in this first poem he comes back to visit his wife who's living with another man. Uh, and there's a prose introduction and then a small poem. Swivna visits Oren. During this time, Swivna's wife, Oren, was living with Goira. One day, Goira had been hunting, riding through the pass of Sleeve Fuid and by Skirig Keen Glinna and Etten Tarov, and his camp was by Glen Balkan. Swivna came down to the camp and sat up on the lintel of the hut where his wife was staying. He said, I wonder if you remember the love we used to pass to each other when we were together, Oren. Things have worked out well for you, it seems, though it has not been so easy for me. And she spoke kindly to him telling how her body was wasting since he left, and how, to her, he was the most welcome man on earth. And she said, Even if the prince himself led me through halls banked with riches, I'd rather sleep in a dark tree hollow with you, my husband, if you'd let me. If all the men of Ireland and of Scotland stood undressed in a line before me, I'd rather stay here with you and live on water and on watercress. Uh, in the second poem, uh, Swivna has lived uh, his life. He's been and met some people. Um, and finally, he has to come back and the prophecy that he will be uh, killed with a spear in his side is fulfilled. So he's killed and he makes this confession. And this poem is called Swivna is Wounded and Confesses. There was a time when I thought the sound of a dove cooing and flitting over a pond was sweeter than the voices of friends. There was a time when I preferred the blackbird and the boom of a stag belling in a storm. I used to think that the chanting of the mountain grouse at dawn had more music than your voice, but things are different now. Still, it would be hard to say I wouldn't rather live above the bright lake and eat watercress in the wood, and be away from sorrow. And then this is the final poem in the sequence, um, where Marling, who is one of Sweeney's friends, um, comes together with some others to bury him. It's called Marling Mourns for Shivna. Shivna fainted then and died. And Molling and the clerics rose, and each planted a stone over Shrivna's tomb. The one who lies here is dear indeed, Molling said. Often in happy times, we two would walk together in conversation on this path. Every time I saw him, my heart would lift. But now his tomb is by this well. We'll call it the madman's well, for often he would eat its watercress and drink its water. Every place that Swivna went is dear to me. And then Molling said, Glen Balkan seems lovely to me because Swivna loved it, and its clear high streams and its crop of watercress. And here is the well of Swivna, my poor man. I love its water, which slaked his thirst. 
and its sand and the bright plants it is holding. Each talk with Swivner was music for me, and I will keep that tune in my breast and hear it in the gl in the birds of Glen Balkan and in the singing of this little stream where the green watercress grows and the bright water dances, which is dear to me because Swivner used to come here. Thank you very much.